Okay, I should have brought a flashlight over here, but maybe you can see this is the shaft it's going to go into right here. This is what this is going to look like once I get this put together, which means that the joining point between these two shafts will be right here. Now, one of the things I figured out is rather than sliding this in and out, I can actually slide this bolt up in that shaft and then pull it back down and clamp it because there's a, I realize there's a clamp ability here. So if I stick that up in the shaft and slide that down and then I can drill a hole and bolt it here and I can clamp it there, that will allow me to make that work. Now, I had been debating on whether to try to make this shorter here and see as much as where that shaft comes to and where I have to work with. I can't cut much more out of this bottom shaft because this is the part with the threads here. So I can't cut beyond that. So that's about as short as that can go. So what I'm going to do is run up there and weld. I'm going to go up there and weld this to that. And then make sure I've got a bolt that works in here. Good. And tighten up later. If need be, I can stick a weld on some of this somewhere along the way, but I don't need to go along and see how we go. Okay? Okay. trick I discovered the other day after all these years when I thought I already knew everything. A lot of times when you're welding, your welding rod looks like this after you've used it. That's where it's kind of burnt off and uneven and, and all that. Well, I figured out the other day that if you, uh, I used to weld, I used to do a lot of dirty welds, which meant I was welding through grease, dirt, paint, all kind of stuff. So I've got to where I've started cleaning this because it makes it a lot better weld. But the other thing I've started doing, sometimes it's hard to get these rods to fire, especially when they're used. So I just take a grinder and, and uh, even up the end of it. Now that would start a lot easier than it would have otherwise. So. That's ready, and that's ready. I'm going to put my gloves on. And the other thing I do is I do wear my glasses under my helmet. Uh, I can't see good without my glasses, and I figured out I can even see through the tinted part with my glasses on inside my helmet better. And I also like to get a lot of light on my weld. So I'm going to turn this thing on. My old welder ain't got but one speed, by the way. It needs to be taken apart and greased up, but that's something I'll do on another day. Say that's a pretty ugly weld right there. You know what? I'd agree with that. I have a reputation for ugly welds. I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but when you get a reputation for something, best not to deviate from that because people kind of, you know, they get their hopes up thinking that they're going to know how you are. And if you disappoint them, then it's hard for them to get over it. Long run, so I 
try not to disappoint anybody by making it really nice welds. That would make them think that I'm better than I actually am. That would make me seem like I was proud. I don't want to be the proud. So. Y'all still on board? Alright, let's go back down yonder. This is going to be part where I'm going to wind up cutting the shaft and slipping that into place. And, and I'm going to want that to cool off a little bit before I do that. I'd love to see if I brought my little short piece of shaft with me. Or if I left it down there. I must have left it down there because I don't see it here. So, alright, right. cut it right there and that should be fine because the exhaust manifold comes out here I'm pretty sure that's not going to be in the way of it I didn't bring my grinder down here it's still up yonder so I need to go get it one of the things I might want to do here is leave a little space in my cut so that I've got room to touch the little piece that's going to go between and uh, although the bolt I've got is a uh, galvanized bolt, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use a grade 8 bolt. I may have to run to the store and get one. I, I might have one down in the barn, but I go ahead and use this galvanized bolt just to set it in place and look at it and think about it. So, I'm cut my grinder on, I'm cut that shaft again. Okay, here's the final cut. Fought a guy out of a 57 Chevy one time who had uh, done something like what I was just doing and in the process had cut the, uh, the brake line. And when he came out of the garage and hit his brakes, it didn't work. And he scraped the car down the side of the door of the garage. Boy, a little closer than I meant for it to be. I need to take a little more off of there. And he wound up scraping the whole side of the car against his garage door. It was a mess. Anyway, I got it. It was a good car. I fixed it up. Put some new fenders on it and stuff. I was glad to get it. That was a fine car. I wish I'd have kept it. I ate a chunk out of my wheel. Go get me another wheel. Well, these things happen. 
don't know if I got enough wheel to make that one more little cut there or not. It would be nice if I could get another cut without it exploding on me. I shouldn't risk it though. Okay, I might have. Oh well, things are going good. I don't need to get in a hurry now. That's how you make messes, you get in a hurry. Mess something up. Later you'll wish you had. You wish you'd have went ahead and got another wheel instead of ruining whatever you're gonna ruin if you don't take the time to do it. This house is gonna go that's about right that's about right where it's going and about right how it's going and it will go right there so that goes right up underneath plenty of clearance there 